Ladies and gentlemen, a great honor. We have with us a woman of great dedication, great generosity, has dedicated her time, her talents, to help carry on the legend of her late husband. I am proud to be able to introduce to you Linda Lee, wife of the legendary Bruce Lee. Please, Linda. Thank you very much. Like everyone else, I'm very, very honored to be here tonight, to be invited to be here. I'm here representing a very dear friend of yours, Ed, my husband, of course, Bruce Lee. Bruce was always very grateful for the friendship that you shared and for your help and for the professional camaraderie that you shared. There were several ways that Ed was very significant in Bruce's life and in his career. I'm not exactly sure when they met because Ed has known Bruce longer than I did. But it was in the early 60s, I think, and they were introduced by a mutual friend of theirs, James Lee, who was a practitioner of Kung Fu in uh, Oakland. Bruce used to drive down from Seattle to meet with James, and Ed on occasion would come up from Los Angeles to uh, meet with uh, Ralph Castro, who had a Kempo school in the Bay Area. And the four of them, I understand, would spend many, many hours together into the wee hours of the night, comparing and contrasting techniques and philosophies, telling jokes, having fun, and eating, and just having a really good time. Um, I think one of Ed's first impressions of, of Bruce was that he was a rather cocky, strong-headed young man who said he could do this and he could do that. And I think it's a, uh, a credit, really, to, to Ed's intelligence that he quickly recognized that he was a real genius in the making, a man who really could do what he, could, what he said he could do. And I thank Ed, and, Ed was all, and uh, Bruce was always grateful to you for providing him with a showcase in later years to prove himself to the martial arts community. Because of Ed's substantial prominence in the karate world, and um, he was able to introduce Bruce to, to uh, other prominent people in the martial arts world, it was a valuable introduction coming as it did from a very highly respected sensei in the United States. Martial arts, as many of you know, can sometimes be very divisive and political and competitive, but Ed was never like that. He always more very willingly and generously shared of his time and his knowledge and his discoveries. I first met Ed in December of 1963 when Bruce and I came down um, from Seattle to, a, to the Rose Bowl. The University of Washington was playing in the Rose Bowl in Los Angeles that year. Well, we never made it to the Rose Bowl because Bruce wasn't really interested in football. But uh, we came down to see Ed, and he and his wife were gracious enough to invite us to stay at their home during that stay. I have a little picture from that trip, which I'll show Ed later, and Bruce on the back of it inscribed, uh, December 30th, 1963, was James, James Lee, Ed and his son, Bruce and myself, standing in front of the Municipal Auditorium, Long Beach, California. I think that First grand, the first international karate championships were just in the planning stage at that time, and you were probably looking for a place to hold them. And as we all know, they've been held in Long Beach um, for the last 20-something years now. Um, Ed was kind enough to invite Bruce to give a demonstration at the very first internationals there. And that was to become a turning point in Bruce's life and his career. So it was at that tournament that a spectator uh, took note of Bruce's demonstration and would later pass the word on to a producer who was looking for a Chinese actor. And again, Ed came to assistance by providing film footage of that demonstration and assisting Bruce in meeting him. And of course, all of that led to uh, Bruce's first appearance in American show business in the Green Hoyle television series. And of course, the rest of Bruce's um, Film history is, is pretty much history. I have brought a little book 
which I will present to Ed later. This was the first book that Bruce ever wrote. Actually, it's the only book that Bruce ever completely wrote. It's called Chinese Bone Fu, The Philosophical Art of Self-Defense. He wrote it in 1963 when he was still a student at the University of Washington. And Ed was kind enough to write a very nice, generous introduction for Bruce, which was very valuable to him at that time, coming as it did from a very highly regarded man in the world of martial arts. He thanks you for that too, Ed. Um, there are very few editions of the original publication of this book still in existence. I'm sure probably you have one old issues stashed in the attic somewhere, but to commemorate this tribute tonight, I've inscribed another one for you and stamped it with the original seal of the Jung Fan Gong Fu Institute. Um, as you can tell, it played a significant role in Bruce's life and in his career, and consequently in mine also. And for that, and for your continuing leadership in the martial arts, I'm here tonight to pay tribute to Ed Parker. Thank you, Ed.